This hearing to hear public comments regarding a request by Foodwood Partners. Is there anyone in the audience that would uh, like to speak to this particular subject? Anyone? Anyone? Move to close the hearing. Or second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Got about five minutes and we'll start our regular meeting. Take the roll, please. Mayor Rowe? Here. District 1 Morissette? Here. 2 O'Connell? Here. 3 Rademacher? Here. 4 Wyland? Here. 5 O'Malley? Here. 6 Virgil? Here. At this point in our agenda, we take comments and suggestions from citizens present for any item not on the agenda. But before we do that, we have a red ribbon week, and Stephen Dolly will read the proclamation. Now you're the president. Yes. Um, well, this is last year's. <laughs> <laughs> we want, we want to love a new one. <laughs> we don't want last year's president. Okay. Why don't you, all you people, get up there so that you're on TV and uh, everybody can see it? <laughs> all right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The, pro the Proclamation for Red Ribbon Week. Whereas the use of tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs is a great concern to society, and whereas the Hudson School District and local chapter of Students Against Destructive Decisions provide educational programs for students urging them to support and live a healthy, drug-free lifestyle, and whereas Community Action Incorporated provides needed services for families and teens in the area and supports programs for the prevention and rehabilitation of drug and alcohol abusers. And whereas the National Red Ribbon Week was originally proclaimed in 1988 by the U.S. Congress and marked by the wearing of a red ribbon to send the message, live drug free. And whereas the Hudson School District, SAD, Community Action, and the St. Croix Underage Drinking Coalition have joined in sponsoring the local red ribbon campaign and the annual red ribbon 5K walk or run event to be held Saturday, October 20th, 2007. Now therefore, I, Stephen Dolly, along with Mayor Jack Rowe of Hudson, Wisconsin, do hereby proclaim October 20th to 27th of 2007 as the official Red Ribbon Week in the City of Hudson and urge all families and students to observe the campaign by supporting the Red Ribbon events, by wearing red ribbons, and by avoiding the use of tobacco, drugs, and alcohol. All right, let's give them a hand. <laughs> I'm usually there for your 5K uh, kickoff, and I'll be there this year as well. October 20th, 9 a.m. at the Hudson High School. Anyone else like to uh, address the council at this point? Anyone? Okay, hearing none, let's go to the consent agenda items. And Madam Clerk will verbalize those for us. To approve the regular meeting minutes and closed session minutes of October 1st, 2007. To approve claims for payment in the amount of 700 $82,980.24. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the issuance of three regular, regular operator's licenses for the period October 16th, 2007 through June 30th, 2009. Additional information is available on request. To approve the request of <laughs> Students Against Destructive Decisions to conduct the fifth annual Red Ribbon Week 5K walk run on Saturday, October 20th, 2007 from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., beginning and ending at Hudson Middle School with the requirement that adult monitors wear safety vests and or handheld stop signs are posted <coughs> intersections for traffic control and participant safety. To deny the request to block 3rd Street between St. Croix Street and Orange Street and to approve no parking on 3rd Street from Orange Street to St. Croix Street on October 31st, 2007 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. To approve the request of Willow River Elementary School for two signs to be placed on the northeast corner of Oak Street indicating minibus parking only 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. with sign costs to be paid by the school district. 
to approve the annual light up night event on 2nd Street from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Friday, November 23, 2007, with traffic detoured to 1st Street or 3rd Streets. To approve the annual hot air affair event to be held February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 2008, including the balloon launches, fireworks, moon glow, and torchlight parade to be held on 2nd Street with restricted parking on 3rd Street and in the north parking lot and north plaza parking lot for parade participants. To place on file the quarterly report of the fire department and the public utility commission minutes of October 9th, 2007, and the joint the advisory joint fire board minutes of September 24th, 2007, and the joint plan commission and common council minutes of September 20th, 2007. That is all. It is your pleasure on the consent. Move to approve. Second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Morset? Yes. O'Malley? Yes. Wyland? Yes. Birchill? Yes. Adamaka? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Motion is carried. Let's go to plan commission final development plans for Washington County, Minnesota Radio antenna and equipment on Hanley Road water tower east of Hagen Street and north of Hanley Road and Denny's going to give us some enlightenment on that. The um, Planning Commission recommendation is to approve recommends approval of the final development plans for the Washington County radio antenna equipment project to be located on Hanley Road water tower site uh, with the following conditions. A, the detailed 8-inch conduit penetrations in the base must be revised to provide structural integrity. B, exact location antennae must be shown including cable routing. And C, landscape plans be reviewed approved by the Community Development Director. Mr. Steve Pott from Washington County is here tonight to discuss their proposal. If there's any particular questions uh, pertaining to the plans that were submitted. Uh, for approval. Council, have any questions of Denny at this time? I have a question, Mr. Pott. Okay. Um, he's here. Yeah. Mr. Pott, hi, I'm Scott O'Malley. Oh. Um, you're going to have a parabolic mounted along with these antennas, is that correct? Yes, one. Uh, six foot? Uh, that's up in the area. It'll either be four or six. Minimum okay. of four, maximum six. Okay. Which direction will it be facing? Washington, towards Washington County? Toward the government center. That particular um, hop is going to go to the... Uh, the St. Croix Government Center. The Washington County... Washington County Government yeah, Center. Yeah, okay. up in Stillwater. Okay. So it's, uh, what, north... Facing... North, northwest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just... That's the one thing that will probably... Be, that people will notice most, I'm, I'm guessing. But a four-footer won't be too bad. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Move to approve with the conditions that Denny has uh, enumerated. Second. Sec. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion's carried. Let's go to finance. Denny, you might want to stay up there. Consider auth authorizing Carmel Carmichael Road Vine Street Corridor Traffic Analysis by Bonnet Strew with funding from Comprehensive Plan Budget. Uh, recommendation from finance is to do exactly that. But then he had some alternate uh, approach well, it, Yeah, I mean, the uh, funding source would be the Comprehensive Plan Fund. Catherine mentioned to me uh, where the private sector may be uh, willing or able to help fund that. Uh, when uh, petitions for annexation are now made, there's a uh, $4,000 application fee that is intended to be used for uh, reviews of this type or other staff reviews. So I would suggest is that the funding would be intended to be taken out of the comprehensive fund at the end of the program. If we have some of those funds left over from the application fee, that those funds would be used to pay for portions of this versus the comprehensive plan fund. Because I mean the intent of those funds is to pay for reviews of the, of the annexation. So that would be a second source that we potentially could uh, go to to uh, have this study funded. Good suggestion, Catherine. Thank you very much. Need a motion? Move to approve. For a second. Second. Discussion or comments? Yeah, I had one question of Bone Stroh. Um, in this traffic study, what? I mean, I, what kind of detail are you going to come back with as far as uh, traffic volumes, uh, suggestions for stoplights, suggestions for um, 
stop signs? I mean, how, how deep does this analysis go? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's uh, I feel free to jump in here. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, it, it's planning level, so it's, it's not going to be like a massive amount of money. It's going to be a little bit of planning level, so, you know, we'll make some assumptions on, on how the, the area is going to ultimately develop and, you know, develop planning level costs and, you know, uh, uh, you know, a concept plan of the turn lanes and those sorts of things. Well, there will be, there'll be a, typically there's a analysis of the peak hour traffic both morning and afternoon. Mm -hmm. So that information will be, because that's really what dictates as far as, as uh, light and regulation of any intersections. Uh, also, the, you know, the general amount of traffic. Uh, one will be the section uh, of the roadway that's being proposed and what the costs are. Um, now, as far as all the costs for lighting, uh, the only well, the only assumption we've made at this time, as far as intersections may be uh, lighted, would be the, inter the most southerly intersection. The others, at least at this time, have not uh, been proposed uh, to be regulated <coughs> in that way. But that's something that would be reviewed, and if if that is uh, proposed, if the traffic uh, warrants are high enough uh, to warrant. Uh, Lighting on those intersections, and we'd come back with cost estimates on those. Because yeah, what I was hoping we'd we'd be hearing is that, based on these traffic volumes, we suggest that this becomes a stop sign, that becomes a stop light, you know, whatever that the the volumes would analyze each corner to say what to do with that corner. Well, we can. You, you're okay. you're wanting that on Vine Street and Carmichael, correct? Well, that's what I heard, and I just want to make sure that my assumption is correct that that's what well, we're we'll, going to see. We'll build that into the. Yeah. We'll build that into the program. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion's carried. Next item is a request to transfer police department unused payroll funds to capital outlay for equipment. Recommendation from finance is to okay the overtime for a total of $17,500. So moved. Second. second. Discussion. I, I have a question. This, this looking at the types of things we're talking about purchasing here, um, you talk about purchasing body armor and photographic equipment, but didn't we also say that we needed um, computers and squad cars and some other things that... We only are recommending that we take the overtime at this particular. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. motion I, a second. I'll be clear: is the motion just for that, or we we also have to discuss the equipment as well in a separate motion? Well, I will clarify my motion yeah. uh, again. Uh, I will move, as I did in finance, that we approve seventeen thousand five hundred dollars to cover the overtime for uh, uh, patrol and investigative. Uh, we want our officers to be paid. Uh, the uh, $41,930 for equipment purchases uh, is sufficiently vague um, and actually should go through the capital outlay process that I don't think it's uh, this is the proper venue for us to handle that. Um, and also we don't even really know what we're buying. There's no list of equipment. I don't know how we could approve that. Um, so I've uh, again moved to uh, approve the 17500 for payment to our officers and that is it was there a second i did that is also uh, there wasn't any clarification on uh and uh, it uh, time to put these into uh, application okay i guess i'm okay with that as long as we can come back with a more detailed list at next meeting because uh, i'd like to yeah, absolutely, I can break We're it down. We're technology deficient in this department, and we've got some money here that we can address some of those issues. Bring that information to me. Yes, sir. Like to, um, see the I, you know, I, I would like to make a comment on that. I'm not arguing with you, Paul, but and to say that, we, and to say that we have money available when the budgeting <laughs> process so far, for as our committee, Public Works, the budgeting process has taught us, we don't have money available. And um, I am loath to talk about spending money as though, well, we've got it anyway, because we don't have it anyway. As you can see before you, you have a summary of the budget request for next year, and uh, Interim Chief Atkinson is asking for almost a million dollars more than the current budget, a 29% increase. I don't think we have any money to spare. Now, I realize this is a discussion we can easily have next time, and I, I welcome that. but I. 
I think we need to frame it in terms of what we do not need to frame it in terms of well we've got the money available anyway well, let's take a look at it and we'll determine whether or not it where it goes okay, good. okay. did we vote on that uh, we did not all in favor aye, aye. opposed motion carried thank you gourmet systems of minnesota an appointment of an agent for applebee's neighborhood grill and bar 2201 cooley road a recommendation from finance is to approve that need a motion move to approve second all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Number seven, Hudson Spirits LLC, change of agent for Buffalo Wing Wild Wings Grill and Bar, 913 Pearson Drive, and review the location of alcoholic beverage storage and service areas. That's been done according to the uh, clerk, and so recommendations is to approve that. So moved. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. We did have a 2008 budget summary. Uh, everybody get a copy of that, and uh, maybe you would like to give us the highlights in the world of finance. The budget requests are in from all the departments, and um, we don't have the cuts yet, as uh, all the committees are still meeting and coming up with what's essential. But the original um, request came in at $8.2 million, which is about $1.4 million increase over last year's budget. With our revenue, we're projecting if the state would allow us to do our growth, which would be the 2.7%, um, we have about 106,000 of additional tax revenue. So we have about 1.3 million to cut from the budget in order to balance. So we have quite a bit of um, work to do yet hopefully in the next week or so we'll know what the state's going to do and um, until they actually give us direction we really you know we'll work on the overages right now but we don't know what to do at this point so well if if they come in at 2.5 uh, percent from Madison you're saying that uh, we're a uh, million three hundred fifty six thousand dollars over what we can handle correct This is Question. operations only. It does not include any capital outlay. Yeah. We have to separate capital projects and take a different approach with that. Questions? Okay. Let's go to uh, Public Works Committee. Dates for fall leaf collection program. I'd like to announce once again that this fall we will have free leaf drop-off and cut grass. It has to be bagged in bags, please, smaller than 90 gallons. Um, if you've done this before, you know that you have to uh, throw them up into the dumpsters, and if it's bigger than a 90-gallon bag, you're going to certainly have a difficulty no matter how strong you are. And it is for leaves and cut grass only. Please, no tree limbs, uh, no old tires or kitchen appliances. Um, and after Thanksgiving, please, no uh, decaying pumpkins. No pumpkins. They weigh a ton, and they're not covered by our contract with Riverside, who, who picks all of this up for us. If you're unable to get to the West End Garage, which is where our usual drop-off point is, and if you're new to Hudson, the West End Garage is simply get on 2nd Street as though you're going to go to North Hudson. Before you get to Lake Malalu, uh, two blocks before, turn left, and it leads you directly to the West End Garage. The um, provision, if you're not able to get to the West End Garage, is that you can call Veolia, your normal uh, uh, refuse handler, and make an appointment for them to pick it up at curbside. The tickets are discounted to $1 each and can be obtained either here at City Hall or at Econo Foods up on the hill or at County Market. Uh, for those who are unable to uh, do either of those two things, and if you live in the 5th District, um, just call me. We've done this for about, I think this is our 11th year, that my friends and I will pick up your bags and carry them for you. Uh, the hours are these, this Saturday, it begins October 20th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and runs for three successive Saturdays. In the intervening two weeks, it will be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from noon to 7 p.m. and someone will, will be on duty to help you if you have an unusually large number of bags. Thank, Thank you, you for that short summary. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Public Safety Committee uh, <laughs> item uh, six, replacement and funding for emergency siren Polls and sharing emergency warning computer system with St. Croix County Communi Communications Center. I understand that 
There's uh, going to be an allocation for $25,000 for steel uh, poles, is that correct? That's what Public Works has been talking about because it's our purview to uh, replace these uh, poles. We have been using wooden poles, which in the past have been actually donated by Excel Energy, which is very kind of them. But even though they are creosote-soaked poles, it hasn't stopped the insects, and particularly the woodpeckers, to go after the insects. We've got some pretty substantial holes which are weakening these poles. Uh, we're looking right now into the possibility of replacement with steel, which will cost about $25,000, or if possibly Excel still has some more wooden poles. They last about a decade, and I think the cost-benefit analysis would uh, come down on the side of using the wooden poles. The only thing that we have to worry about is the decibel level is such, it's 104, it's very, very high, that the poles must be high enough to get those sirens far enough off the ground so nobody in the immediate vicinity becomes deafened. I did call uh, Trudy Pokenhagen today. She's looking to see if there's any available. Uh, is there money in the budget for uh, this 25000 allocation for steel? It's a request of 2008. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we still have time to we make that We still have time. Decision. So this is for in information only at this okay. point. We're still pursuing. Very good. Uh, were the wooden poles tall enough? That was one discussion. We have to determine that. Uh, Ms. Popenhagen is going to check out what they have. Oh, yeah. okay. So they do have some taller... She thinks they do have some taller ones, but we don't know that for a fact yet. Cool. She's okay. checking on it. Okay, let's go to unfinished business, update on projects. Chuck? Yes, good evening. Uh, quite a bit of progress has made this last couple of weeks on, on the various uh, improvement projects around town. Uh, we did receive uh, the core permit for the wall project, and they plan on starting tomorrow. And let's uh, make sure that uh, <clears throat> if we are uh, in communication with any of the DNR people that are uh, working on this, uh, thank them for their quick response. And we do have an individual who lives here in Hudson, correct? Yeah. I, the name slips me, but uh, we probably should, uh, and if you so desire, we'll write him a note of thanks that he did pick that up in such a fast fashion. But that's really good news because we can proceed with that wall as you're going to point out in just a minute, right? Yes, and then just for one point of clarification, this was a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers permit. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, they fast-tracked for us and, and got that through. Can you give me that individual's name, the one that reads Ides and Hudson? I'd like to... Yeah, I'll, I'll have to track it down. I, I don't... Uh, Thank you. The, the, gentleman, the two gentlemen that we were working with at the Corps were uh, Dan Seaman and uh, uh, Andy Bodet, and the, they're the... They were the two that processed that Great. pretty quickly. Uh, and then also, uh, Nye and Aldrich, we have that paved. All, all that remains in that project is restoration, so you should see that later this week or into early next week. And, and Excel has some restoration, too, as they replace some gas lines. Are and, we hearing any complaints from the people along that street? Uh, you know, for the most part, it's, it's been rather com you know, uh, free of complaints. There was one concern about a driveway. Uh, you know, they did what we asked is in regards to um, moving back their, their dog fence, their invisible fence there. But in the course of removing their concrete apron, uh, we did break it underneath their pavement, and the break happened a little bit further underneath the pavement, and so we did have to, uh, and a, he had a brand new driveway too, so unfortunately we had to cut back and give them a, a little bit larger apron. Okay. But, uh, you know, we Keep did them happy. that issue. Doing our best. Great, thanks. Uh, and then also, uh, we do have uh, the Carmichael Road Crestview Drive has been paved now, uh, but the weather is such that it's holding up the painting of it, and there's also some lead time on that, that big mast. Um, do we have the second layer on there already? Yes, we do. Oh, we do. Uh, and what's going to happen tomorrow is we're going to alter, uh, temporary tape. Um, I was surprised so we can open when that up. It, when everything was, when the lights were out of commission, everybody was so polite. It actually seemed like it was working better than when we had the lights. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but it will work even better once we get, I'm sure. get it all opened up. Looks great. And, and then... Uh, Cooley Road and 11th there too, that's moving along and we should be seeing uh, that turn lane paved uh, later this week. Okay. 
Any other questions of Chuck on any of the? We want to thank you for uh, accelerating that and the good job you've done. And uh, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, and then I just wanted to make one other note here that uh, I will not, I cannot attend your next meeting. And so if if my presence is needed, then uh, we'll we'll have to figure out a proxy. Do you have a second quarterback that is going to appear, or what? Uh, my assistant, Dennis Posser. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a call. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Update on health insurance. We received all of the employees' health information forms back. We have all but one of the annuitants back. Great. Um, the deadline is September 25th at noon, which is a Thursday. October. Oh, sorry, September, yeah. <coughs> um, October 25th at no noon. That afternoon, we will get the information, whatever we have out to the union representatives, so they have the opportunity over the weekend to review whatever they need to review. Um, we will also put together the financial end of it, so that's available. Um, we will be looking likely at a special meeting, either the th sometime morning, evening of the 30th, or morning of the 31st. So Jan will be in touch with all of you to find out what your schedules are. Um, we figured the evening of the 31st would be difficult. Well, the state deadline is the 31st, well, isn't it? Well, right, correct. I mean, theoretically, the facts could go out, but we just saw it with being that it is a church, well, church evening, it's also <laughs> Halloween, so we'll shoot for either the morning or the evening of the 30th or the morning of the 31st, so if you could check your schedules and Jan will be in touch. You know, they're working at getting us quotes. You know, we'll know on the 25th what came in, and so. Any questions on that? Any comments that that committee would like to make? I'd like to thank Devin for doing a good job of uh, quarterbacking it. I think he's done a real good job. So As thank I told you. Al earlier today, I now know more about health insurance than, <laughs> than you ever, ever thought I would. Mm. Yep. Well, it gives us a shot. Yep. yep. So, good job. Okay, let's go to uh, C, combining wards and using three polling places for election. Ordinance number 14-07. You want to give us the highlights of that, Madam Clerk? Yes polling place, um, an additional polling place due to the um, large number of registered voters and the Methodist Church has indicated that they're interested in helping out in that way. So it would be districts three and four that would move to the new place and the other districts would stay in the places that they're already at. So it would be one and five here at City Hall and two and six at the government <coughs> center. Do you have any questions? Will we be putting this on our internet? Yeah, there'll be a notice, and then the people that are affected by the change um, will be getting a postcard to notify them for Great. the next upcoming elections where they should go. Move to adopt Ordinance 1407. Do we have to suspend the rules? No, we've already had first oh, reading. I'm sorry. I'll second. I wasn't here. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion or comments? I think it bears repeating that the uh, church was kind enough to yes. donate this space to us and not accept, not even, even though we offered some remuneration to not accept it. I think that's very generous of them. They must have been watching our budget uh, situation. <laughs> yes. yes. And they also are providing us with a storage area for some of you know, the things that so we don't great. have to haul everything back and forth. Well, that's terrific. So, I mean, it won't be a large area, but some of the stuff that's kind of cumbersome, they've offered to do that too. So. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Let's go to new business. Consider rezoning River Ridge Professional Center at 1200 Ox Oxford Street from I-1 Light Industrial to B-2 General Business District, Ordinance Number 15-07. Let me close myself from this discussion. Okay. And there are no um, public input uh, either at the Planning Commission or the uh, public hearing held earlier tonight. Uh, there's been uh, no readings of this ordinance to date, so this would be your First reading or your choice could be to suspend the rules and go to a second reading. I'll move for first reading. There's a second? Second. Discussion? I would actually argue for processing this because it has been before the plan commission. It has been, uh, uh, we've had a public hearing on this at the full council. Um, I think there's no reason to hold it up any further. Uh, there has been not a, this, this, a single murmur. No of, comments of, Yeah, of problems with it. Is there any reason why we couldn't approve it in two weeks? Is that a problem for anyone else? Well, Denny, is timing? I, I, I haven't heard that this is a timing issue, that the first reading tonight would be acceptable and oh, okay. bring it back in two weeks. I just 
Okay. I thought mention, maybe mention that you do have the alternative okay. of going to second reading tonight. Well, in that case, I, if, well, we have a motion and a second, right? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Opposed. Motion's carried. Easement agreement with Timothy Stewart, 1708 Stone Pine Circle, to construct a fence with the utility easement area. David Gray is going to give us the highlights there. Good evening. Uh, like Jack said, there's a, there's a request for an easement agreement from uh, Tim, Timothy Stewart. He's looking to purchase the home at 1708 Stone Pine Circle. Uh, the, uh, the Stewart family has a number of children, and the, and the fact that the property is adjacent to Grandview Drive, uh, they're hoping to uh, construct a fence along Grandview Drive. Uh, one thing that has occurred since, since uh, you've received my uh, uh, issue sheet is the fact that uh, they, they would like to uh, continue to put the ornamental fence along Grandview Drive, but substitute a uh, uh, three-rail three split fence uh, along the other property lines. I guess personally I don't see that as an issue uh, with our fence ordinance, but I just want to make, make the council aware of that. Um, I guess I'm rec recommending approval uh, of the easement agreement. Okay. Any uh, questions of that uh, recommendation? David, if I remember correctly, the easement agreement calls for the property owners to foot the cost of any changes that need to be made per the city's request. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I'll move for approval. For a second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you much, David. <coughs> are, are we going to have a closed session? Probably not, huh? Um, yeah, I think okay. there's a, all right. just a couple of things we can do. The other ones we have, uh, I have an appointment to the Police and Fire Commission. Uh, would you pass these out, please? Frank Rhodes recently resigned from the Police and Fire Commission. Uh, attached is his letter of uh, 10307 attached. I'd like to have you confirm the appointment of Tom Redner, 714 Wisconsin Street, to fill the remainder of Mrs. Rode, Mr. Rhodes' term on the Police and Fire Commission through April of 2011. Move to approve the appointment of Tom Redner. Second. I think Tom will give us uh, some input and leadership on the Police and Fire Commission that is much needed. Third second? Second. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. And we covered everything. Everything but closed session, right? Right. Need a motion to go into close. <coughs> so moved. Second. Roll call vote. O'Malley? Yes. McConnell? Yes. Rademacher? Yes. Burchill? Yes. Morset? Yes. Wyland? Yes. Motion's carried. Would we'll take a couple of minutes to clear the 